it's only two days after the test finishes. Is it good to get back into it, or would you like a little bit more time to sort of celebrate <laughs> great with him? Uh, look, it, it is what it is. It's it's tough work. It is coming back from uh, you know, five days test match takes a bit of out of the, out of the body, but um, we're still playing cricket. We love playing cricket, so just enjoying being out there and enjoying playing some more cricket. Yeah, a little bit sore waking up this morning, but you know, just mentally trying to get right because you know, test cricket's tough and everything doesn't go your way all the time. So in that sort of space, um, it's a nice way to prepare too because it's sort of um, you know, you obviously don't have everything going your way, and you can sort of get back and be lazy and and let it go. You can get out there and actually you know get something out of it and play some cricket. Not many people have played as many tests as you, was it? Or had, but where did that win rate among? Your sort of in your career, um, yeah, have to be top top five at least. Um, look, I've never won. I've never won in England. I've played three Test matches here in 2011. We didn't win, and obviously, I think we won la one last time we were here. Oh, yeah. It's not. It's never easy. And actually, Test victories in itself are never easy anywhere. But yeah. um, you know, the way we played, the way Steve played um, throughout the Test match, and the contribu uh, contributions that everyone had. And, Wake Lino and all the bowlers bowled in that last innings. Um, you know, it was it's a culmination of a lot of hard work through that test match, but in saying that, we know we still got four test matches left, so you can't look too far ahead. There are a couple of points in that test where it just looked like you wouldn't do it. I mean, it must did that cross your mind? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. I, I, even after day two, I thought, look, if we get a couple of wickets here, if we can get them for a lead of you know, 50 uh, more than what we have. We're, we're still fairly in the game. They end up getting 80, and I thought, well, we're still in the game. The wicket's actually deteriorating re really quickly. I mean, Moen was spinning it day one. When I saw that and Gaz come out day two and spinning it the way he was, I thought, well, it's not going to be easy to bat last in this wicket. And JL said that too, and everyone knew it. Um, then when they got a lead of 80, I thought, well, you know, if we can get that deficit down and then start building a lead, I know how quickly the momentum can change. and. You know, when, even as a fielding side, if you, if you start looking up at a lead and think, well, what are we, well what, what's a good, good chase here? What's a good chase? And I thought anything about 150, 200 would be very hard work. And it ended up being the case. But, um, you know, it was even harder when you get three, 390 to chase because you just know you're not going to chase it and you're pretty much trying to save a game. Yeah, how did you look at your innings? Do you sort of feel, I left runs out there? Is that your thought process? Or do you just, that's it, move on? Um, yeah, pretty much. Look, I'm trying to get as many runs as I can last time. I'd love to get 300 runs every game, but um, it's not always the case. But uh, in my head, I was just batting. Um, I, I, as I said, I saw the deficit, and I knew the quicker we could get down the deficit, you know, if they put balls in my area that I thought I could score, I'd, I'd come after them. But, you know, the way, you know, the way everyone played sort of throughout the whole second innings, you know, Steve batted beautifully, and Hedy came in, batted really well, and then Wadey batted really well. Um, just right there and then I think was the game for us and we did that that was the toughest time you know we could have come out there in the third innings and been four or five down before you know getting a lead but but we weren't we were probably three down and when that was the case we're thinking oh we're in the game right here so um, credit to the bowlers too they bowled beautifully that day three in the morning to to get them out for um, you know whatever the total was 80 run lead so it was a good team effort. Sure you would have to see the openers put on 200 or so, but getting out there with sort of low cloud, newish ball, is that as good a sort of practice as, as you can get, given that's the, the great challenge in Test Match cricket here, isn't it? Is that today? Today, yes. Yeah, look, the wicket, that was, that was actually quite a tough wicket. It still is quite a tough wicket. And you see our bowlers bowling, and there's a lot of nibble out there. It's going both ways, sort of off the deck. So um, it was pretty soft this morning too. It was pretty hard to drive. Um, Any time in the middle is a good time. So, you know, look, England as we know, it can chuck up a variety of different conditions. When the sun's out, it can be very good. And um, the ball swinging can be quite tough. That was nipping today, and it's also quite tough. So um, every day, you know, you're trying to get out there, trying to be better. So that's all we're trying to do today. What was it like seeing Stark and Hazelwood fire up? They haven't played much on tour, but it's like seeing them out to there today. Uh, they bowled pretty well, didn't they? Yeah, they created a lot of chances. Um, as, as I said, it's not an easy wicket out there, and they just hit that length beautifully. Um, you know, they've, they're two world-class bowlers. Um, we obviously have a lot of depth um, at the moment uh, to have two guys of the calibre sitting out. So, look, it's, it's great to just see them out there playing. They love cricket too, so um, hopefully we can get a few more wickets tomorrow. Has it been a little bit tougher in the nets with those two out of the side trying to prove their way back into the side? <laughs> 
Uh, I haven't had any nest sessions since then, so <laughs> <laughs> might have to tell me. Might have to ask me next week. But how have I mean, you, know, you know them as well as anyone in the squad. How have that kind of approach to, I suppose, the, the last week since finding out they weren't in the, um, the test eleven? Yeah, they've been great. They've been, they've, you know, they've been doing all the twelfty work. They've been normal around the team. They've, they've been awesome. And as expected, they're great blokes. So you wouldn't expect anything less from them. Um, I think says a lot about our team the two guys who have been in the team for so long um, play a lot of cricket um, get left out and they still don't carry on they don't do anything they just go about their business still the same blokes they were before you know not playing that game so I think it speaks volume for the team and for themselves and in talking about how tough it was batting how impressive does that make Travis Head's innings and I suppose how much sort of confidence and form will he take into that second test yeah he's he batted beautifully today um, he looked you know, he's, he's been batting well. I think he was batting well on the A stuff too from all reports and batted beautifully in the last test match. Um, you know, scoring runs of the habit, so you've got to keep doing it. And, um, I think he was uh, he's in a really good place right now, so hopefully he can keep doing it for the rest of the tour. And you just, just to ask about Smithy, what was it like watching Smithy do that? Because that was something else, wasn't it? I've seen him do it so often, to be honest. It's just, it's just like another day in the office. Yeah, he scored 25 test hundreds, didn't he? He has. Yeah. He hasn't been off for a year, and like yeah, a like crowd that. jeering I've and been all. Playing that with him stuff. for a long time. I've seen him do that for a long time. He's a, you know, his his hunger, his decision making is the best in the world in test cricket. At least it's the best in the world. So he's, the way he goes out there, the way he backs up hundreds after hundreds, and when he gets on a roll, um, he keeps it going. Um, you know, to come back first game the way he did was exceptional and I think the team was just really stoked, really happy for him and to get a win there too, just it was just the icing on the cake. Usman, uh, how different is batting number three in England compared to anywhere else in the world? So, like, what are you doing when the openers are out there? Is it almost like at times it's better you're not watching because you just want to go and like, just face what's coming at you? Like, how, how different is it? It's, it's not that different. I mean, I play, we've all played in cricket a lot, uh, in England a lot too. I have too, and all the other guys have too. We've, the mindset is still pretty much the same. Um, every condition is different. Like the, what, what we got out here today was very different than what we had um, last game at Birmingham. The wicket was totally different. So you just got to get out there and assess it as quickly as possible. It's not like I'm not trying to watch balls. I'm trying to watch balls. Everyone's different the way they prepare. Some, some got a screen in front of them. Some just you know chill back watching, and some are not watching. Just what it is, yeah. Osman, um, you uh, obviously England didn't have James Anderson for all but four or so overs of the of the first test. Um, did you feel when you were batting, like, did that did that have an impact on how some of the other bowlers were approaching it? And I suppose the balance of the attack you were you were facing, and I guess the balance of an attack that you might face at Lords and going to the rest of the series. Um, I can't really speak for the English bowlers, but he's a big loss. He's Jimmy Anderson. He's taken. You know, a gazillion wickets for England in Test match cricket, um, and done well for a long time. He's he's a big loss. Just like you know, any time you lose a bowler, it's never easy for the side. Um, but you know, it's <coughs> in saying that the other bowlers I thought bowled pretty well. Um, yeah, there's, there's not much more to it. I mean, when you lose your one of your frontline bowlers, it's a big loss. Uh, Cameron, Bancroft. Cameron Bancroft had a uh, sort of slightly disappointing uh, test scoring at scores of 8 and 7. Uh, he looked pretty disappointed out there today when he got out and then he went on to do some work in the nets with Graham Hick. How's he doing? Uh, is he pretty disappointed that he did get out and what sort of things was he working on? Do you know? Uh, I don't know what he was. Um, but he was batting beautifully today, I thought. Even out there, was, that first couple of hours was extremely tough. He couldn't, didn't feel like he could drive the ball at all. Um, he was playing really well. Um, one test match, you miss out one test match, not a big deal, you miss out two test matches, it happens. It's cricket, you can't score runs all the time. Um, he's a class player, I'm sure he'll score runs, um, I've got no doubt.